We're good. All right. Well, um, welcome everyone to uh, this webinar called uh, Sharing Unbound Virtually. Uh, we're, uh, we're really grateful that you could join us. Uh, in, in general, we're just so thankful for every one of you that is part of the Unbound family, every one of you that uh, would lean in and, and join us on a, on a Saturday like this. And, um, and it is an exciting time that we're in. Uh, there's so many ways that God's working during the coronavirus and during difficult times. And we want to, we want to lean into the part that he's given us to, to expand the kingdom during, during these uh, very difficult times. I think uh, any one of you that is familiar with Unbound will find this hour uh, webinar encouraging. And we, we always want to be a source of encouragement to you. Uh, some of you may be just connecting, just seeing what's going on, and uh, we're really happy to see you or have you for that. Uh, some of you might be looking for ways to spread Unbound. You've received and you want to give it away, which is which is awesome, which is the, the thing that we want everyone to be doing. And the third group uh, that may, you may be just really looking for how to do this virtually. You, you've had this inclination, you have this urge, maybe, maybe you really know that this is your future, or maybe you've begun and you want some more direction. And so, um, so we're gonna be, uh, we're going, that's what this uh, webinar is gonna be about. Uh, it's going to start off with uh, Rachel Lozano, who is going to present the un Unbound proposal or, or idea recommended approach to a, a webinar uh, online, virtual web webinar. And then, um, then we have five great panelists that have all used, uh, used the internet to spread Unbound. And uh, it's all a little bit unique. So you'll have exposure to some unique expressions of how to do it. And then um, after, they, after they share, uh, Matt's gonna share about the e-courses, the opportunities that, that you have to use the resources that we've developed in the e-course to spread the word. Um, following that, we'll have some questions. And, uh, and we're going to ask you to, to write those questions in the YouTube chat on the side. Um, so now what I'm going to do very wisely, I'm going to turn this over to Jen Lozano, and she is going to lead us through what I just described. So uh, Jen, I, I'm placing it in your hands. Sorry about that, everyone. Hopefully. From here on out, we will not have technical difficulties. I'm not sure what's going on, but um, we do not have Rachel in our meeting. So we're going to skip around and go to our first panelist, which is Deacon Joe Cooley from Massachusetts. I'll give him a minute to introduce himself. And then he's gonna share a little bit about how he has been using Unbound virtually to spread the message. So Joe, let me unmute you. Oh, you are unmuted, and I'm just going to pin your videos to the top. Welcome, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Happy to share about the experience with this. Um, so I'm, I'm Joe. I am a deacon in the Archdiocese of Boston, Massachusetts, in the USA, for those of you that are not from this area or from this country, I guess. Um, I just want to share a little bit about uh, what I've been doing, what we've been doing to bring the message of Unbound um, in this time of quarantine. And actually, I wanted to start with just a real quick uh, scripture verse, because I think it's perfect for what we're dealing with. It's, it's really Acts of the Apostles 2.0. And it's, it's when Stephen was persecuted. It's Acts 8.1. It says, on that day, there broke out a severe persecution of the church in Jerusalem, and all were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And so in the very beginning, Christianity spread when, when there was persecution, and the Christians went and spread wherever they went. So Right now, it's kind of COVID persecution, right? And so people are experiencing this in new ways and new places that don't have an opportunity, maybe don't have an opportunity would never come to these things. So it's a great opportunity, I I've found at least, for uh, just spreading the gospel uh, with new mechanisms, new means, new ways. And so what we've been doing is, is a few things. We've been doing training online, uh, the Advanced Ministry Training Workbook. Um, and there's, you know, kind of once a week meeting for a couple hours. 
we do breakout rooms and it actually works really well. Um, all the different events we have kind of worship, you know, there's some teaching, um, there's some sharing, there's some going into breakout rooms and sharing. And that's been, that's been working out uh, very well. Um, a few weeks ago, we had a DVD conference. So the, the Unbound Freedom and Conference uh, DVD series, uh, we used those videos to teach the five keys and we had, you know, 40 to 50 people uh, attending that. And then today, actually right now, people are receiving prayer. So I'm kind of coordinating that, you know, when I'm done here, I'm going to go back to that. Um, we've, we've advertised these sorts of things through email. Like we have a distribution list and I don't know how it happened, but I guess I do know how it happened. It's the Holy Spirit spreading things, but there were a number of different states, 12 states and three countries that, that actually joined the DVD conference. And I thought that was pretty neat because I know that not all that was on the list to start with on the distribution list. We also have a website, so we share information that way. Uh, and it's a way that people can register for events and pay for things and uh, sign up for prayer. So there's really an online presence to be able to just interact, uh, a public face to be able to interact with people that are seeking uh, prayer and seeking uh, conferences and ministries and stuff. And then we just use these online tools like we're using today, Zoom, to um, facilitate that interaction. There's tons of lessons learned. I don't think I have time to go through any of that right now, but I'd, I'd love to share with anybody if you, if you want to go into more detail at some point. I will say that it, it does take a little bit of, of time to just learn the platform that you're going to be using. I've found Zoom to be very good because there's, it seems to be easy and a lot of features that work well. Um, I've used a lot of different platforms um, for, my, for my day job as well. Um, as far as people's testimonies, I've, I've really heard nothing but positive. Uh, people that came to the conference uh, a few weeks ago, like they want to know when we're doing this again. Same thing with the, uh, with the training sessions. Um, and yeah, I, it's, the, I don't, this has been working very well. And I'm very excited to see where the Lord is going to be taking things. Um, we're still kind of in a, a lockdown here. So there's still an opportunity to continue to spread this way because we're not going to be having any live conferences anytime soon or live events. So um, with that, I'll, I'll turn it back. I don't want to take any more time here. So thank you. That's awesome, Joe. Thanks for coming and thanks for sharing um, with us now. Appreciate it. Keep up the good work. Um, I think we're just going to continue with our panelists at this point. So we lost Rachel. Um, we'll bring her in at the end. So the next panelist I have up is Reverend Andrew Goodman from the UK. Um, so welcome, Father Andrew. I just need to unmute you. So give me a second to do that. Oh, you're good. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's really good to see you and to be sharing in this um, lovely event to promote Unbound Online. Um, so we began quite late in the lockdown. We decided to transfer all our ministry onto a Facebook group. And um, the group is, um, if you know Facebook, there is a feature in the groups where you can switch on units. And so the units, people can uh, study videos, talks, materials, documents that you put in the units. And then they can tick off when they've completed those units and also the moderators can see those units completed. So it's a kind of a methodical way of taking people through some of the basic teaching that we wanted to do. So we, um, it worked well when we were heavily locked down. Lockdown is lightening up now. So the pace was quite fast actually, I realize now. So we had a nightly talk at 8 p.m., which was a kind of condensed summary of the unbound material that someone might get at a conference. So it doesn't substitute for a conference, it doesn't replace it, and it doesn't replace watching the full videos online, but it gives people a taster and some basic teaching. Um, it's, I think it's what you would call asynchronous learning. So it means that people, because the videos are up there in the units, people can look at them when they like in their own time. But we did them at eight o'clock, so people became used to this time of eight o'clock, they would get a talk. And, um, there were some lovely contributions from people. So we had people's journal art posted there uh, with comments beneath it. And we've had lovely feedback from people. And we've expanded it now into Zoom prayer after talking to Matt about how that might be done uh, with appropriate guidelines. So we are offering Zoom prayer on a Wednesday evening. 
um, we began with the key of forgiveness, just a short 20 minute prayer. And now we offer sessions from 45 to one hour long. And we've got teams who are doing that every Wednesday. Um, and we can steer people who want to make appointments for prayer to those Wednesday nights. So we know we've got people on standby. Um, feedback we've had is that people said it's given a connection to others who are engaging in or developing unbound ministry. Um, it's been a lovely example of international cooperation. So Matt came and spoke to us from Philadelphia and um, we had um, Father um, uh, um, of oh, mental block. Anyway, from Poland, um, we had uh, a priest from Poland, which was lovely. And um, also we've been ecumenical. So we've had a nice mixture of um, churches involved as well, which is our policy. Um, and um, we've got a tiny intercessor team who are praying for group members now. And that may extend to Facebook mentoring as well. So in a nutshell, it's a Facebook group, really, which people can join. We've got about 280 people on there. Wow, that's awesome. Thanks. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate you joining us today and sharing. And just a reminder, all of those watching live on YouTube right now, um, if you have any questions as the panelists are sharing about the events that they're running, feel free to put them in that chat. And um, we're going to try to answer those questions at the end. So now I'm going to bring up Tara Mankowski from Northern Virginia. She has been working with Father Thomas Cavanaugh, and um, they have been doing a series of things that she's going to share about. So welcome, Tara. Thank you, Jen. So we have been doing Unbound retreats. We had a March retreat scheduled before COVID hit, and when it did, we were like, yeah, we're still going to do this. So we set up a Zoom retreat very quickly. And so what we do is we do over three nights. We do Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night, and we cover all five keys. So as we go through, we have um, different people give the talks and then we have various testimonies. So as the retreat has grown, we have had people who have been participants who are now contributing and giving testimonies as to how they have received freedom through the Unbound ministry as well. And so we do a lot of promotion on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, just pushing it out. Our diocese is very supportive, so they will push out the information too. So we just get the word out and it's actually gone very international. So we have a lot of people from the Philippines join us. We've had people from Russia all over Europe. Just a lot of people are really hungry and so it's been a huge blessing. Um, and we have many, many repeats come back. So we encourage people once they come to the retreat to keep coming because they're like, we keep getting something new every time they show up. So it's really for anyone who is interested. And we wanna make sure that we address questions that people have. So during the talks, we leave the chat open to only talk with the host. And then the host at the end will facilitate a question and answer. And the different people who give talks or testimonies will answer those questions so that people can get that instant feedback and a deeper understanding of the five keys. And so it's just been a really big blessing. We've seen a lot of people grow. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback. We're able now, we also offer a follow-up prayer so once the people attend the retreat, and we know they can either come directly to us for prayer or they can go to our diocesan prayer team. And our diocesan prayer team has been working with us to provide prayer after the fact. So we've really brought this together. And so even though it started at the parish level, it's really just grown into an international uh, event and it's really awesome. So thank you, Jen, for letting me share. Thanks, Tara. That is amazing. I know, I, I'm not sure if Joe mentioned this, but um, He's, he has ministry going on right now while he's also, um, he's organizing ministry online. So I know lots of people are using um, the online platform for ministry as well. And we're seeing great fruit from that. So that's exciting to hear about. Okay, next I'm gonna bring up Lorelai Lowe, who is from California. Lorelai, I'll let you introduce where you're from um, and share what you've been doing in California. Great, thanks, Jen. Hi, my name is Laura Lai. I am the team coordinator for the Unbound San Francisco Ministry. So we recently finished the Freedom in Christ conference, which we spread out in four days. It was a unique experience because we actually collaborated with another Unbound team ministry, which is the Orange County, uh, which was great because they had things they can offer and we had things that we can offer. So it was, we complemented each other in that way. Uh, and the whole thing was truly orchestrated by the Holy Spirit because we weren't even planning on doing this. We were going to, our team was going to just show videos like Joe did, but we thought we would talk more about it and we're like, no, let's collaborate and it turned out really well. So we used the Zoom webinar uh, feature for our conference and one of the great features we liked about it was a practice room where you could 
uh, be in the backstage and prepare and do rehearsal before we broadcast. Um, we had about 100 people uh, that registered, but it also included people from the Philippines and France and also all over the US who had people dialing in from the East Coast and in the Midwest. Um, and we recorded the talks so they were able to uh, watch the talks whenever they wanted, which we found out was really, really helpful. That was one of the great uh, things I like about the conference was they were able to go back and look at the recordings and learn them again and really know what the five keys are. Uh, we did have a registration fee of $20 to cover speaker fees, but that was no, of no issue to most people. In fact, most people even donated, uh, gave additional donations. We promoted our event through emails. We reached out to everybody on our email list and all the distribution list. Uh, we also reached out to friends, family, different church ministries within our parishes. We also posted on Facebook. In fact, we created a Facebook page <laughs> specifically for this. Um, and also, I want to thank Tara because at the time you guys were finishing up on one of your retreats, we were about to start ours, so we kind of piggybacked on that. And we asked if you could promote it, and you did, which is great because we gained uh, more attendance from that retreat as well. So thank you. So if you want to reach out to other Unbound teams, I encourage you to do that because we are Unbound family after all, and we do support each other. So I think it's great that we could spread the word together and support each other. Um, and again, we were just trying to, as far as target audience, we just wanted to spread the word to anybody and anyone that would want to, want to hear about Unbound. Uh, we also had, we had speakers, testimonies, we had music ministry. What we wanted to do was create an environment where uh, the things that people would see at a live conference, we wanted to bring that virtually, um, which was technically speaking, had some, uh, was a little bit difficult, but it took some time, but we finally figured it out. And I, if we were to do this again, I think we would. There were some things we would change, but definitely would definitely do it again. We did do Q&A at the end of the talks. Um, Zoom has that feature where you can do Q&A, so that made it really helpful. And so as far as testimony, um, personally speaking, uh, God also was revealing stuff for me during the Unbound. So while I was putting on Unbound Conference, God was unbounding me at the same time, so which is really great. But we also received a lot of great compliments. Each, each of the speakers spoke to different people differently. Um, again, they really love being able to just look at the talks again. We gave them a short period of time, um, a week until a week after the conference to review the video, so which is great, which actually in, ends tomorrow. Um, yeah, people were just moved by it. They were buying the books. Uh, we haven't received a lot of signups yet. I heard the Orange County have. They're starting to do Zoom, uh, Zooming uh, with their sessions, which is great. San Francisco is a little bit harder. I don't know because it's San Francisco. <laughs> so pray for the city. We're hoping to increase our Zoom uh, sessions. Um, so definitely I encourage people, if you're thinking about doing Unbound virtually, I encourage you to do that because you're able to reach more people in places that you wouldn't be able to in, in normal situations. So thank you. And if you have any questions regarding Zoom and anything about putting on conferences, feel free to reach out. That's awesome. Thanks, Lorelai. I love um, your sharing about how God was working on you as you're putting on the conference. So everybody out there listening, that could happen for you too. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> I love it. Um, next up for our panelists, we have, I forget who I have, uh, Father Giuseppe, which I saw he joined us. Um, welcome, Father Giuseppe. Let me unmute you and get your video pinned. Are you trying to unmute yourself? <laughs> There we go. Okay, you're, you right. you're good. good, good. Welcome. Well, hello, everybody. I'm very glad to be here with you. This is really a beautiful and powerful ministry. I've seen beautiful results in a lot of people. And frankly, I've been uh, very blessed myself. So thank you, Neil, and your team for what you have done and what you're doing. And all of you are spreading this wonderful mission. Um, my name is Paul Giuseppe. I'm with the Franciscan Friars of Renewal. I live in Newburgh, New York, which is about an hour and a half north of the city, New York City, that is. And our area is, is uh, kind of rural in a sense, except for we live in Newburgh, which is a small city. And for the past couple of years, we've been doing one day retreats, leading people through Unbound, myself and a team of lay people would start with Eucharistic Adoration, and we go through each of the key. Uh, a lay person would present the key, then I would lead the people through the actual prayer during the day. We would be begin with Eucharistic Adoration, 
to set our hearts focused on the Lord Jesus, and we would end with Mass. So our whole approach was structured on the sacraments of the church. And we had an, an event scheduled for Lent, which got canceled because of the COVID situation. And so we decided that we would try to do it online, which in fact that we did with part of the Father's Ministry cooperation. So thank you for that. And just to explain to you what we actually did, we started with a pre-recorded uh, opening event. We publicized that on YouTube. And we started with adoration, praise and worship music, a uh, quick overview of the five keys. There were a couple of witnesses and I led the people through a prayer for baptism in the Holy Spirit. And then the people were all directed to view the five videos from Heart of the Father's Ministry, which they provided free of charge during this pandemic. So thank you for the generosity in that. In between those five videos, we had set up a Zoom meeting, actually a total of three throughout the course of this conference. The first Zoom meeting was after the first opening event for any questions and a number of people joined for that and there were a number of very good questions. The second one was in the middle of those five videos from the Heart of the Father's Ministry. It also went very well. And then we had the closing event, which was just last Wednesday. And the video was pre-recorded by myself. Again, we started in front of the Blessed Sacrament with adoration, some praise and worship music. And then we led the people through the prayer of each of the five keys, which was uh, apparently very powerful for them. Then after that, they watched that pre-recorded video. We had a live Zoom meeting. And we're very blessed to have Bishop Colachico from New York with us on that call. And he gave us a word of encouragement and a word of blessing. Our approach uh, simply to be connected with the authority of the Catholic Church and to work uh, with the sacraments of the church. Um, what we're going to do, and we have done after that closing meeting, we sent out a survey to all those who were involved. There's over, I think, 220 plus people signed up for this event and participated in it. And surveys going out to them and what they experienced and if they would like personal prayer. In that final Zoom meeting, there was really positive feedback. And I would say the most notable thing was that a number of people mentioned that through this prayer, they became aware of things in their own heart, in their own lives, which they previously had not been aware of, which to me is a clear indication for the Holy Spirit who always teaches us the truth. So hopefully we'll have some follow-up prayer with a number of people, which we strongly encourage. We're coming out of the restrictions for COVID, so I think we'll be able to do prayer in person um, already. So our team is working on coordinating that and making that happen. So I think that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Father Giuseppe, for joining us today. That's great. And amazing to hear that you might be meeting in person soon. Um, so you'll have to let us know how that goes and what kind of regulations you use. Um, that'll be interesting. Okay, at this time, I'm going to bring back Rachel. I think that she is now back <laughs> and with us. So, um, Rach, thanks for joining us. Rach is going to share a little bit about our suggestion from Heart of the Father about how you could run a online event. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm really sorry I had technical issues before, but I think my internet is going strong now, so hopefully I will, uh, won't get cut off this time. And thanks to all the panelists for sharing. It's so awesome to hear what each one of you is doing and you're just amazing. It's really amazing to hear how the Lord's using you. Um, and when we started this webinar, we said, this is for everybody. So I'm sure some of you out there are thinking, I don't have a team or my team's very small or I could never give a talk. Like, how is this, how can I do this? Um, and so, we at Heart of the Father came up with a model that we felt like would work for everybody. So maybe you're one person who just wants to share with some family and friends about Unbound and introduce them. Uh, maybe you're a team and that they all end. You are just starting out um, and maybe you're established and you have a really large team and we feel like this could work for everybody. It could work for each uh, set of circumstances and we really hope that you will go after it and not feel like you can't do it after being a part of this webinar. So at Heart of the Father, we encourage people to do um, eight weeks. There's eight talks, so one talk a week. And the idea would be that uh, your group would watch the talk on their own. And then you would get together via Zoom, Skype, whatever online platform works well for you to, um, talk about, discuss what you viewed in that video. And we felt like having people watch the video ahead of time gives them some time to process and enter in 
to that conversation that you have later in the week. So a lot of people already talked about this, so I'm gonna touch on it real briefly. So the first step is getting the word out, right? You, you don't wanna do it by yourself, so how do you invite people? Um, and I felt like the other panelists had great suggestions um, that you can go through churches that you are connected with and have them promote it. Go and ask people who've already been a part of one of your events previously to join you this time. Um, I think Tara was saying how people have done it over and over again and they always find something new and beneficial to it. So don't feel like you can't send that to your email list of people who have already attended before. And if you're just one person who's been impacted by Unbound, give some friends and family a call. Let them know how Unbound has changed your life and that you want to introduce them to this thing that had such a big impact on you. Then the next thing is to set up a group meeting. So find a day and time that works well for everybody and set up that Zoom meeting, that Skype meeting that you are all gonna gather on. Uh, I think we are all really familiar with Zoom now after COVID, it's been a really common practice. So hopefully none of your participants would feel like they can't uh, be a part of that if it's online. So um, you'll start with having them rent or buy the videos. We at Heart of the Father have all those MP4s there. We make it really easy for people to access it. Um, one thing I say to people is that if you're just starting out and your participants aren't sure, do they want to commit to all eight weeks? That's a really low commitment level. It's a $3 rental. Go check out that first talk. Deliverance is a good word and see if this is for you. And a lot of people will get drawn in. They'll realize that it is for them and that they do want to find more uh, out about more they do want to be set free so if it's a really low commitment level and they can go and check it out and if they want to keep it they can buy it and have it to watch whenever they want so during your meeting uh, so everyone will watch the video first and then you'll get together later in the week to talk about it um and we have a little bit of an outline of uh, some people have touched on this about what would work well when you do get together in that zoom meeting and the first thing is to start out with worship that we really want to enter into the lord's presence to ask the holy spirit to be there and some of us like lorelei was sharing have an awesome worship team that can be there and lead worship and so that's amazing if you can do that go for it and if you're a smaller group, you don't have a worship team, just spend some time entering in to praising the Lord, to worshiping him through prayer to enter that time. Then it's great to have a testimony. And sometimes those testimonies can be from people who have already been through Unbound before. Maybe they've been through a conference or they've received ministry, or maybe it's someone who's in your group right then that they watch the video and they send you an email or they give you a call and they say, that impacted me so much. I never thought that I could be set free and now I have hope. So think about it, it, what, who that testimony could be. And it could even be you. How has Unbound changed your life if you're the leader and your group is small? And then you're gonna get into the meaty part. The discussion will probably take up most of your time and you may want to come up with your own questions uh, but we have the i'm sure a lot of you've seen this the freedom of christ workbook that we've taken the time at heart of the father to come up with questions that we feel like will really help your group to enter in to what they're watching in these videos what they're learning and it's done for you you don't have to do so much work especially if you're new at this to use the workbook questions to lead your group. And we do encourage that if your participants can to get your own workbook. If you've seen this, it's awesome. There's not only discussion questions, but there's reflections at the end and it helps your participants to fully enter in to what they're learning to reflect on how, what it means for their own heart and their own lives. Sometimes we can watch a video and, you know, kind of zone out or we're watching we're not really engaged and we feel like having those questions and those reflections in the workbook really help participants to engage 
And then the last thing that you will want to end with is prayer. And for the deliverance is a good word and some of the earlier talks, there's um, not an obvious way to go to lead people into ministry. So it might simply be ending a time of thanking the Lord for Unbound and what you guys are going to be learning. But in the later talks, as probably most of you know, the videos take people through how to pray in this way. So the forgiveness talk leads people in pronouncing forgiveness to the people who have hurt them in, your life, in their lives. So you might want to do that as a leader on your own, is to take your group as a group through whatever key they learned that week. Or you can stream the video live through Zoom. Uh, it's an awesome feature that you can do. And take that last part of the video and allow it to lead your group through whatever key you're on. So through renunciation, through uh, forgiveness, through repentance. And that, that is a great way to respond to what people have heard. And we really want to be there involved and help you along the way. So I've already had groups contact me if they have questions, um, they're not sure how to about do something. So please let us know if you are doing this we want to know. We want to, one, help you, and we also want to hear about how the Lord's moving. It's so awesome and encouraging, probably for all of you, to hear these panelists about how the Lord is moving. So let us know whether you're a really large group or whether you're a small group. We would love to know. Um, and some of the groups uh, have invited Neil or Matt to come speak, so that's always an option um, to maybe towards the end, you wanna allow your group to have a Q&A session with Neil or Matt um, or Janet. If that's something you'd be interested in, let us know and we'd love to support you in that way to help your group feel connected to Unbound and connected to the heart of the Father. And um, the last thing is we would, if you were able, encourage you uh, to take an offering for Heart of the Father, uh, that we are a nonprofit, so when you can support us in that way, that's awesome. And we feel like it can also help your participants to sew in to what they've been given. So to give, they've been given and now they can give away. So that is a great option for them to sew into the ministry and to pursue that. And that is all. So that's our Heart of the Father, and I'd love to answer any questions now. Um, and my, send me an email, give me a call if you're thinking about doing this. Thanks, Rach. That was great. Awesome. Um, we're doing great on time. We asked the panelists to keep it really brief. So hopefully um, they're doing such a great job that, that we're staying on time, which we really appreciate. I am going to introduce my wonderful husband, Matt, in just a second here. Let me get him unmuted. Um, and he's going to share about the online opportunities that we have. And Matt, I know already you can speak to this, that one of the questions that we received was, do we have an advanced training course online? And so you can tell them what's happening with that after you finish sharing about the e-courses that are up and running. Take it away. Thanks, Jen. Um, so I just wanted to piggyback on what Rachel said. Uh, obviously, you've heard like a, a wide variety of ways to present uh, today. Uh, Rachel's being the the plug-and-play version you know that's the most easy and, and to facilitate a lot of you experience probably different levels of comfort with our talks some of you feel quite comfortable giving these presentations yourself uh, and others not so much so you might start with the DVDs um, and you you can stream those to a private group uh, please don't put them on on YouTube or anything public any public recordings, but you can you can use those to a private group, uh, just as you would do a DVD conference. Some people will mix and match; they'll do some presentations and then others uh, DVDs. Um, we do have a script for the Freedom in Christ conference. If you're interested in that, don't hesitate to reach out to me. It will kind of guide you through the most important points that need to be made in each talk, and it will help you become more comfortable with giving those talks. So I just wanted to say that. So the other question is, you know, what do I do when I'm not giving a, a conference online or I'm in between conferences and there's still people out there that want to learn Unbound? 
um, they want the Freedom in Christ message or they want to get trained. Um, so your team might be doing advanced training and someone's asking you for basic training. Or you might be doing basic training and someone's asking for Freedom in Christ. So uh, what we've developed is uh, e-courses that will enable individuals to be able to uh, learn about Unbound particularly during some, a, a season when you're not presenting that message. So I'm going to try to share my screen here. Oh, great. So we have three uh, programs. Freedom in Christ, which is the message of Unbound. This is our conference material. So it contains all of our um, DVDs, the videos, as well as the workbook material. It has practical opportunities. It's got scripture studies. Um, it's entirely self-paced. So people can jump in and jump out of this e-course whenever they need to. Um, and they can experience the conference for themselves. So this is done as an, as an individual. So we can have people from all over the world uh, doing this. Um, and it's at any time. So if you're not doing a retreat, you're not doing, you're not having online opportunities. When we're transitioning back into, you know, and, and maybe people are not ready to go to conferences yet, this would be a great opportunity for them to be introduced to Unbound. The other course that we run uh, is the Unbound Basic Training. And this is a nine week course. And this one is done as a cohort. So we actually do this uh, sequenced every two months we release another course and we usually get between uh, 30 and 50 people um, and you're paired with a partner and it pr provides you with all the basic training uh, so the, the DVDs the videos the workbook material uh, there are webinars with myself and my dad uh, where people get to ask questions uh, so it's, it's very involved, it's very hands-on, everyone gets a partner, and at the end of the e-course, um, you will actually minister to that partner and get feedback. So the goal of the basic training e-course is to get you prepared to serve. So if your team's maybe not doing basic training at that time, you can plug someone into the e-course so they can get caught up and then they can join and be a part of your team and go through uh, whatever training processes you have with them. And last but not least, we have the advanced e-course. Uh, this is coming soon. We're working on it now. And this should be released at the end of this summer. And uh, if you've ever looked at the advanced uh, study program, it is about helping people who have been doing Unbound for a while. It's very uh, good information, particularly for, for team leaders and those responsible for training. Uh, there's a great talk in there by, by Rachel about how to do phone intake. Uh, there's a talk about leading a session and how do we you know, provide feedback for someone? How do you grow a team? Um, as well as all the virtues that are needed uh, to be a part of this team. So I want to encourage you to use this opportunity, use, this, um, use these three tools as a way to plug and play what might be missing or what you're not able to to offer to people and uh, one of the benefits for the e-course is it's not limited to uh, country or location we have people from all over the world you know joining these communities and they're learning together and sharing and it's just a, a whole lot of fun um, so uh, I want to encourage you to, to check those out uh, let people know about them um, and use them as as they're appropriate for your team so thanks for letting me share. Thanks, Matt. All right, so now we have time, um, a little bit of time left for some questions and answers. And so if you have, some of you have been putting questions in the YouTube chat. If you something else came up, feel free to continue to do that. Um, lots of great questions. I'm actually gonna start with this question with Matt. Um, so Matt, if you could, yeah, you're still unmuted. Um, the question that one, there's been asked a couple times and somebody addressed it in the chat, but for anybody watching, um, people are wondering, what is privacy like on Zoom? Is there privacy for when they're doing ministry on Zoom or even if they're having group discussions? Um, what does that look like? And Matt, I think you could probably speak to that. Sure, so there were uh, 
early in COVID, there were some concerns about Zoom because everybody switched to Zoom. And uh, there were some issues early on with privacy, you know, people bombarding meetings and things like that. Uh, Zoom has fixed a lot of those things. Um, but there are some things that you should do that are helpful to protect privacy when you're doing a conference or a webinar. Um, you always want to make sure you turn on password uh, so that everybody who's coming uh, has a password and enters uh, using the password. Um, when you do a recording um, of your conference or your talk, uh, make sure you change the name before you save it. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of tips there, and and if you just go to Zoom, you can you can read all the tips regarding you know protecting your meetings. Now, as far as your uh, ministry sessions, um, you're just going to set up a, pri a a one one to one meeting. So you just set up a meeting. Uh, you send just that person who's receiving the ministry that link with the password, uh, and then they can join the meeting, and it's you and them you're not going to turn on recording okay so you make sure that you're you're not recording that session um, make sure you have enough time uh, if I'm the host of the meeting I and, and I have a, a zoom uh, account I have unlimited time but if you don't have uh, a, a certain account you only get 40 minutes so that can be super awkward <laughs> I wasn't using my license the other day and I was, I was ministering to someone and we finished up the interview and I said Okay, we're going to have to log back in for the ministry. Um, so make sure that uh, you have enough time. Um, Zoom is a good way to do it, but I've also used Skype. Um, I've also used uh, FaceTime. Um, so, you know, just, just um, make sure you're not recording and let the person know that you're not recording. Um, someone was asking me recently about intercessors. Um, it's always good to have an intercessor with the person if possible. So if they can bring their spouse or someone that they trust to actually be in the room with them and to be your hands and feet, that is, is great. Uh, that, that would be important uh, if possible. Um, it, it's more difficult if you had the intercessor because that person wouldn't be able to see that intercessor. So it's, it's optimal to have that intercessor with them. This next question, um, Rachel, I'm going to direct towards you. I think you'll be able to answer it. Let me just pin your video. Um, has anyone done a virtual program without having a team? And what are the pros and cons of that? I think you could probably speak to that a little bit. Great question. So yes, people have done these virtual programs without having a team. Um, and I talked a little bit about how you can make that work and make sure that you are teaching Unbound and presenting it in the right way by using the talks that are already there. Probably the biggest thing about not having a team is what happens when you host this and people want ministry, right? Like that's the hope that you're leading them in this and they are going to want ministry. And if you don't have a team, how do you meet those needs? So. Um, you might be trained and feel ready to minister some of those people via Zoom, and that's great. If you don't feel ready, or maybe it's too high a volume of people, you can contact Heart of the Father. We have a great team here, and we've been praying via Zoom, and we would love to help you. We would love to minister to people that have gone through your uh, conference, your program, and are looking for ministry. Uh, another option would be for us to connect you with a team that's close by to you. So maybe we could, even though Zoom allows us to pray for people all over the world, it would be nice to connect with a team in your area or in the person's area that when they are able to go and see people in person again, they already have that connection. So uh, those are a couple options if you don't have your own team. Great. Um, Matt, I'm gonna direct you to this one, this question. How have we been using intercessors during ministry sessions um, and what's your recommendation and suggestion for that? Um, like I said, it's, it, it's helpful to have the person bring an intercessor and have them in the room with the person who's receiving ministry. Um, 
here on our local team, uh, we can use Zoom to have our, our intercessor uh, to be part of the meeting as well. So you're just setting up a meeting with three people um, and the intercessor can be there, can be present, can speak the Father's blessing when they're asked. Um, so we, we do have intercessors as well. So it's, it's the same as if you would have an unbound session, you'd have the intercessor uh, in on the meeting as well. You want to make sure that the person has the opportunity to introduce themselves and, and, to, and, and the intercessor should introduce themselves as well so that they make a little bit of a connection so they're not wondering, you know, who's this other person here at the meeting? Great. Thanks, Matt. Um, I just want to mention that the panelists are getting a lot of love. People want to know how they can reach out to you, how they can be on your team, how they can get prayer from you. So I'm going to work on also people are asking for like one page summaries of what you did. So I think what I'll do is work with you outside of the webinar um, to get something that we could post. And some people have asked, will this webinar be posted later? And yes, it will be. We're recording it and we will make it available to everybody to watch after the fact. I know that even for myself, maybe because I'm doing some of the technical stuff, it's been hard to like get every detail. So even I would love to watch it again. A couple other little like website questions. Um, Matt and Rachel sort of addressed this, but where, if I don't have a team or where could I get ministry? We, uh, our website has so many resources and we do um, have links to Unbound Teams all throughout the world on our website. Um, so that's a great place to start. Um, where can we get workbooks also on, on our website? And I think that there's been a mixture from the panelists of people using the workbooks and just sending people directly to our website to purchase them. Um, or maybe they've just been using some questions from the workbooks themselves to lead discussions. So there's sort of, that's sort of all over the map in terms of how people are utilizing that. And um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else um, that anybody's asked. Um, I think we're in pretty good shape. So at this time, I'm going to turn it back to Neil, who is going to make some final comments and um, I'm not sure he sometimes likes to answer some questions. So, Ted, could you up oh, your unmuted? There you go. All right, you're all set. What a wonderful uh, discussion. I'm so encouraged by all the uh, panelists who have taken it and gone for it. It's just, uh, you know, we, we can present an idea. We can, we, I think uh, what Rachel presented was excellent, but there are variations like uh, Father Thomas in, in uh, Virginia, he just, he just uh, did these retreats where you do about 10 minutes, just about 10 minutes talking about Unbound and pointing them to the book and point, uh, point to, and giving a testimony, then pointing them to the book, pointing them ahead. So there's a lot we can do just to get the message out and lead people to a further place. And um, so each, each story, uh, Lorelei is, excellent at, at Zoom and planning everything very precisely. That was just wonderful. Uh, Father Giuseppe uh, obviously integrating it uh, with his uh, preaching and his, uh, his days of uh, uh, renewal. And uh, Unbound is being integrated in so many different ways. And I'm, I'm just excited about letting you know and, and speaking it that there are ways to just use the material, get the word out. It doesn't have to be like somebody else. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna use our materials in a particular way, we want you to contact us, and we we really do want you the best you can to be part of the team uh, as a protection for the ministry and a protection for you. So if you're uh, you know if you just want to share your, with your family, you know, a small group, your neighbors. You know, just go for it. But in terms of increase, in terms of ministry, make sure you're um, you're under pastoral authority. That you're that you're doing things in the light. That you're not a lone ranger out there, just taking things and 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 uh, and taking risks that you don't need need to take. So um, that would be the main thing that, uh, in hearing those questions, I felt like I wanted to respond to. 
I'm uh, thankful for, uh, for everyone that participated today. So if, unless you have something else, John, I think I'll just end with uh, praying for everybody that's uh, on, the, uh, on this webinar. You got it? Okay, so, so let me pray. Holy Spirit, we invite you to be with us right now. And I ask you to enter every room, every place, and help us to glorify Jesus. Jesus, we, we ask that you'd be glorified through the five keys, that you'd be lifted up, that we would never we would never start thinking about this, this technique that we have, or that, that Lord, this is simply an expression of what you revealed, the gospel, and, and we want to use it humbly and by your Holy Spirit. We want to be part of your ministry to set captives free. And we want to be part of your ministry of revealing the Father. So even now, Jesus, I ask you to touch all those people on this webinar. Touch them with the Father's love. And let them, let them, uh, and I'm just being reminded that when the, the woman found the lost coin, and there, was, there was heaven celebration. There was a celebration with the angels. And the sheep was found and the boy was found. Heaven celebrates. And we ask you, Lord, to, uh, to allow us to hear the celebration, allow us to, uh, allow us to be hungry and thirsty to participate more in the finding of that which is lost and leading that which is lost home to the Father's heart. And let the celebration just, uh, just be part of everyone's life is listening to this webinar today. So we give thanks in the name of the Father and the Son and the Spirit. Amen. Thanks for joining us and uh, please stay in touch with us so we know what the needs are and where we can go from here. Thanks, Dad. All right, everybody, have a great Saturday. Always feel free to reach out to Heart of the Father. Check out our website, heartofthefather.com. And if you have any questions after the webinar today, um, I will, we will send out an email with a link to this video. And, um, you know, my email is jen with two N's at Heart of the Father. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. And we'll see you soon. God bless.